So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So as you listen to me, you can begin to relax. And as you relax, you can just take a moment to close your eyes. Allow yourself to get comfortable. And while you get comfortable, I'm just going to tell a story in the background. And it's a story about a man who is out hiking in the woodland. It's a story about a man hiking through the woods. And he wants to connect with nature. He's decided to go away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life to find some time for himself. And he's been walking through the woodland for many hours of the day. And now the sun is beginning to set. He can notice the shards of soft light shining through the branches, through the trees overhead gently lighting up the path in front of him. He can hear evening bird song. He can notice other sounds of other animals, sounds of rustling leaves. He can smell that smell of the woods as he feels each footstep while he walks deeper and deeper into the woods. And as the sun sets, so the woods begin to get darker. He takes out a torch. He can notice the air cooling. Notice that feeling of breathing in and out that cooling air, and walking by torchlight deeper and deeper into the woods. He just follows that path, and he's searching for somewhere to set up camp, and he knows where he's going, he knows he's almost there. And a little while after sunset, the woodland opens up into a clearing, opens up into a meadow, and passing through that meadow is a stream. On the other side of the stream is a cliff face. And the stream is only a shallow stream, and as he approaches, he can hear that water bubbling along. He can begin to smell the slight water smell in the air. Noticing the way the torchlight reflects off that water, and he gets near to that stream. takes his shoes and socks off, rolls up his trouser legs, and walks into that cold water, feeling that rushing water passing his toes, passing his ankles, the moving material inside that stream, Small stones, gravel, tickling his toes as he walks through.
through that water. Some of the plant life. He walks out the other side, up onto that bank. He walks over to a cave. It's the other side of this stream. In that cliff face. He walks into that cave. Puts his bag down on the floor. Near the wall of the cave. Sits down on the floor. Inside the cave. Gets a towel out of his bag. Dries off his feet. Puts his shoes and socks back on. Pulls his trouser legs back down. And then gets some dry wood out of his bag. And starts to make a campfire. Just outside the entrance to the cave. And he lights that campfire, noticing the way the light of that fire casts dancing shadows on the cave walls. He watches the way the flame flickers, can smell that campfire, hearing the flickering flame, crackling wood. He gets some other bits out of his bag, a sleeping bag, something to rest that sleeping bag on, that keeps him just slightly above the ground. And he sits on the end of his bed. He gets a pan out and cooks himself up some soup, holding that pan with some cold soup in it, over the flame. And just heating that soup, occasionally shaking that pan, just to stir that soup. Smelling that soup as it cooks. And then using a spoon, he enjoys that warm soup. He enjoys a bread roll with that soup. And enjoys this experience of being out in nature. Having time for himself on his own out here in nature. Feeling that warmth coming off from the campfire, the warmth of the soup. And as he finishes that soup, he relaxes back on his camping bed. He has an upright torch he places beside his bed, lighting the cave. He relaxes back, feeling so calm and comfortable. Just reading a book with that sound of the stream off in the background. The sound of the crackling fire and the flickering flames, the dancing shadows on the wall. The occasional sounds of animals and birds in the woods. And he just feels so relaxed. And at one with nature. And after a little while of relaxing and reading. 
as that sun has continued to set. So that there's no trace of light in the sky. He heads out of that cave. He takes his sleeping bag with him. He rolls up his sleeping bag like a pillow. He lies down on the grass and rests his head on his cool sleeping bag so that he can just gaze up and enjoy the stars for a while and he watches as those stars so gently move across the sky the occasional shooting star crackling past in a flash of light of colour Noticing satellites passing way overhead. And just feeling so relaxed. And while gazing up at those stars, he finds his eyes wanting to gently close. And he just allows them for a moment to relax shut as he drifts deeper and deeper inside. And while he drifts deeper inside his mind, so he, he begins to have this sense of a musical bowl being struck gently, playing a long note. He focuses his mind's eye on that long note. Then he hears it being struck again. He focuses his mind's eye on that long note again, holding his attention all the way until that note vanishes. And he feels that these notes are like his unconscious mind guiding him deeper into relaxation. Like his unconscious mind telling him to take this time to have a meditative experience. And as he relaxes there, so he can begin to notice that cool breeze on his cheeks. Breathing in that cool air and relaxing. And after a while of relaxing, out here on that cool grass, being able to feel that grass tickling the palms of the hand through the fingertip, through the fingers, through the spaces between the fingers. He decides to go and lie down, back in his camping bed. He takes his sleeping bag back to the bed, unrolls it, lies down in the warmth of the sleeping bag, listening to that crackling fire. As that fire burns down to embers. And radiates that glow of warmth. And as he relaxes down in this cave. Aware of the breeze blowing into the cave. He begins to drift and flow to sleep. And while he drifts and floats asleep, so he starts to have a sense 
of being on a sailing boat. And he's on a sailing boat not far from the shore on a warm summer's day. And the water's reasonably calm with just that slightest, subtlest of rocking as those waves pass by. That slight sloshing sound as they interact with the bottom of the boat. And he has this sense that he's sailing to the shore. Sailing to the shore of a, what looks like a deserted island. And he sails his way over to that shore. And when he's quite near to the shore, he lowers the anchor. Goes to the back of the sailing boat. Lowers a rigid inflatable boat down from the back of the sailing boat into the water. Climbs into that boat and rows it over to the shore. And as he approaches the shore, so he can notice monkeys bouncing around interacting with each other, jumping up into the trees, gathering fruit, jumping back down onto the beach again. And as he gets very close, they notice him and run off into the trees. And he disembarks that boat on the shore walking barefoot in the sand, feeling the warmth of that sand. And he decides he wants to go and see these monkeys closer up. So he heads towards the tree line, sits down near the trees, and waits. He doesn't want to disturb those monkeys, just allow them to get comfortable with his presence, while he just waits and watches and lets them come to him. And after a little while those monkeys feel safer, they come out of the tree. They carry on gathering fruit, interacting with each other, some of them playing with each other. He notices a monkey with a baby on their stomach, clinging on. And he watches those monkeys interact with each other. And then one of the monkeys seems to become curious about him as he sits there resting against a tree, totally motionless. And they come over to him and cautiously they reach out and touch his foot. And when he doesn't flinch, doesn't respond, that cautious monkey touches his other foot and then gets a little closer until eventually it climbs onto his lap and then that monkey starts to groom his head and he feels so calm while that monkey is grooming his hair Then the monkey goes off, climbs a tree, and grabs a large fruit from this tree. And he doesn't know what this fruit is. He feels that whatever this is, 
it actually looks more like a coconut. But although it resembles a coconut, he's aware that it isn't a coconut. And the monkey comes towards him carrying this item. And then when it's near him, it walks around to the tree that he's resting against. And with a very solid movement, it strikes what it's holding against that tree. And he hears a crack. And then it comes around in front of him, holding what looks like an unusual cracked coconut. And he can see some slightly green liquid inside that coconut-like plant. And the monkey holds it out to him. And he doesn't know what to do, so he just sits there. Then the monkey takes a step closer and holds it out again. And so he reaches forward and takes it. And then the monkey gestures as if to gesture to drink that liquid. And the man's unsure and so he doesn't. And then the monkey walks off. And then reappears with the other half. And the other half seems to have some of that green liquid in as well. And the monkey drinks some of that green liquid. And then gestures back to the man. And so the man decides he'll try some of that green liquid. Then he has just a sip of it and is surprised at how sweet that green liquid tastes. He feels that that liquid has an apple taste to it. And then he starts noticing that he feels a bit warm. He starts to increase in his feeling of well-being, of happiness. He notices that the world around him seems to be becoming brighter and more vivid. That his senses seem to be more heightened while at the same time, with a greater ability to focus. And he watches as that monkey walks over, sits down next to him. It rests its head on the side of his chest. And seems to be just relaxing with him. And he wonders whether the monkey's having the same kind of experience that he's having. And as he relaxes there, this drink seems to be flowing healing and well-being through his body. As he gazes down at his body, he almost notices that liquid passing through him, almost like a light, a healing light, passing through his body from the top of his head, down his neck, his shoulders, down through his body, down to his legs, relaxing and healing him. And he has this sense, on the one hand, that he's dreaming, but also this sense that he's aware inside this dream. And that this dream is likely teaching him something. About living life, increased well-being, and happiness within life. 
and he doesn't know fully what this dream is teaching him. But he's sure that it's connected with him going out into nature, seeking out this kind of experience. And as he relaxes, so he begins to drift asleep in this dream. And as he drifts asleep, he starts to have this sense of walking through woodland. And the woodland feels familiar, yet doesn't look familiar. And within the woodland, he finds a golden key glistening in sunlight that's shining through the leaves overhead. Almost like a dancing shard of light that's dancing around that key, making that key glisten in the dimness of the woodland. And he goes and picks up that key. And as soon as he touches that key, he notices what looks like a blue light coming from the key, almost like a path to follow, and he feels that that key almost has energy to it, and he follows that path deeper into this woodland, pushing through branches, leaning on trees, climbing over uneven ground, finding his way through the woods until he sees one lone tree in a slight clearing. He walks over to that tree, runs his fingers around that tree and notices a slight notch that looks almost like a slight hole in the tree. And he's curious, and so he places that key into that slight hole, and the key fits, and so he turns the key, and a door opens inside of that tree. And he walks through that door into the tree. On the other side of that tree, he finds himself in the most beautiful, vast meadow. Meadow for miles in every direction, full of butterflies, birds, rabbits, a plethora of animals, the most beautiful sky. and a box just sitting there and he walks over to that box lifts the lid on the box white light glows from inside that box and he finds a pen in that box like an old, expensive fountain pen. He takes that pen, and under the pen he sees some parchment paper. And he takes that paper, and he sits down in this meadow, and he feels this urge to start writing. And as he starts writing, unaware of what it is he's writing, he notices that what his hand is automatically writing is telling his story. Is sharing his journey. And he finds this fascinating. 
and he instinctively sits there writing until the story catches up with where he's at. And what he's writing is that he's writing. And he realises what this all means. And he writes that he realises what this all means. And he places that paper back in the box. Puts that pen back on top of the paper. Closes the box. Leaves the tree, feeling a deep sense of well-being, serenity and understanding of his path, of the journey and what's important. And he leaves that tree, walks back through the woodland. He finds himself waking with that monkey still resting there. And he can feel the monkey breathing as it rests, asleep, loose and limp, against him. And so he just rests where he is. And eventually the monkey wakes up, continues on with the other monkeys, and he leaves the island back to the boat, leaves on the boat, and begins to feel the warmth, then begins to hear the sound of morning birds, and he awakens in that cave makes himself some breakfast, splashes his face with water from the stream, feeling that refreshing coolness, and knows that he's going to continue his time out here, he's going to camp here in this cave for a few more nights. Where he's going to learn even more about himself in his dreams, through his experiences, before heading back after his time off to the everyday hustle and bustle of life. And for now he decides to just go and explore the woods. He takes a camera into the woods with him, he explores the woods, having the patience to take photos of things most people don't even notice, and he enjoys his time here, and each night he goes back into the cave, cooks himself some food, enjoys the evening until he's tired and then relaxes down in the cave relaxing warm in the sleeping bag and drifting and floating comfortably asleep 